Hello and welcome to the latest edition of my podcast. Today I am delighted to be joined by the Wigan MP, Lisa Nandy. Lisa's been doing brilliant work for the town for as long as I can remember and she's been a champion uh, for the town, helping send an open letter alongside Great Manchester Chair, Chairman, uh, Mayor Andy Burnham uh, to the EFL, uh, helping Wigan Athletic in these uh, tough times. Uh, so first and foremost, I'd like to ask uh, what has happened since you sent the open letter. Um, well, I've had a, a discussion with the EFL. We've got the sending a formal response to our letter and uh, inviting us to come and Andy and I to come and have a, a meeting with them. Um, we obviously raised the issue about the points deduction, which is something we want to talk to them about. Um, but we also want to make sure that the EFL are doing everything that they can right now to help us find not just a buyer, but a buyer that has the long-term interests of Wigan Athletic at heart. We've we've obviously got to get a buyer in, but we've also got to make sure that we're not just sold off to the highest bidder um, for someone who has no interest in football, no interest in the Latics, no interest in Wigan. Um, where we don't want to be in a couple of years' time is what happened to Berry, where one bad deal was replaced with another, and eventually it just became too difficult to salvage. So... We, we're going to go and have those conversations with the EFL, but I've also been having those talks with administrators this afternoon. That's great news. And obviously, uh, on a personal, uh, on your opinion, what, what do you think Swigger Athletic's chances of having the point reduction uh, suspended? So I, I think I think probably about, uh, if I had to put odds on it, uh, probably about 50-50, um, because there is a very strong argument that not only has, is this something that, you know, happened to us that was completely outside of our ability to control. Um, but it was a deal that was approved by the EFL and then, um, you know, only four weeks later fell apart. Um, but there's also the fact that although this wasn't COVID related, it wasn't caused by COVID, uh, there is a, a real problem in that we haven't got any income stream coming in now we, you know normally you wouldn't just have fans in the stadium you'd also have hospitality up and running you know weddings receptions things like that we just we haven't got any money coming in we're trying to get through the next uh, few games so that we fulfill the season and the EFL shouldn't be hitting us hard they should be stepping in to support you know there'll be other clubs that go down because of covid potentially so if they're going to bring in a, a softening of the rules like the uh, RFL have done in relation to rugby league then they have to apply it to Wigan not just apply it to clubs that that are later impacted do you think after all this the EFL's fit and proper persons test otherwise known as the owners and directors test has to be reviewed I mean, I, I think there's, you know, there's a there's a total awareness right across football that the owners and directors test is not fit for purpose. It's not really worth the paper that it's written on. And when what's really struck me is that when I speak to people at any level of football privately, they all acknowledge that. Um, but it, nothing has been done about it. We've had select committee reports, you know, after Berry. Uh, collapsed. There was a report done by the Culture, Media and Sport Committee that said this this has got to be changed. This has surely now got to be the moment when the, not just the owners and directors test is overhauled, but the way in which football is regulated, where the money goes. All of these things have been talked about for years, but if this can happen to a club like Wigan, then this can happen to any championship club, and we've got to change this now. This has got to be the moment. Absolutely. And, uh, earlier this morning, or earlier this afternoon, I should say, you have uh, been meeting with the administrators at Wig Athletic. Uh, what was the outcome of that meeting? Um, well, it was a constructive meeting. Um, all of us, you know, I, I mean, I want to make sure that question, the right questions are asked and answered and that people are held to account for this. But that's my longer term goal. In the short term, what I want, like everybody else, like the council, the club, the administrators, is to find a buyer. I suppose what's slightly different is that we want to make sure that we secure the club's long-term future. We want a good buyer who understands Wigan, understands Wigan Athletic, cares about football, cares about the fans and cares about the town. The administrators, it's not that they're against that, but their job, their primary focus is to get the best price that they can for the club. And so we've got to find a way of making sure that they can get a good price for the club 
with um but but from a, a person or a consortia that has our interests at heart i'm i'm feeling relatively optimistic about that it's a really difficult moment and it's a critical moment the next few weeks are going to be really important but just today Ian Lenigan announced that the Warriors are looking to build a consortia to see if they could take over ownership of the Latics. It's a really positive development. The council are very keen on it. I've known Ian a long time and I'm, you know, I hold out a lot of hope for that. Um, and the administrators said that today they've had 50 interested parties. Um, they've had in-depth discussions with a number of them. Uh, they've got two that have proven that they've got enough money in the bank to be taken seriously and they're expecting others to come forward. So there's lots of reasons to be optimistic, but we've just got to make sure that we get a buyer and that we get the right buyer and then we start putting this club back together. On a personal level, were you happy with uh, what you were told by the administrators? Um, well, happy might be the right word. But. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, it, you know, it's not really my job to be happy with the administrators. It's my job to challenge them. And it was quite a challenging conversation. You know, I wanted to get clear the details of how they're getting paid, what their incentive is, um, what criteria they're using to assess bids, how much flexibility they've got to give priority to bids that prioritise the long term future of the club. Um, so it was quite a robust and challenging conversation. That's how we put it in politics when we're being diplomatic. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, but it was also constructive because at the end of the day, it's in nobody's interest for Wigan Athletic to collapse. It's a really good club. Everybody knows that. Everybody has acknowledged that we shouldn't be here and we shouldn't be in administration. And, you know, for a lot of people in the football world as well, their reputations rely on clubs like Wigan you know, getting the support we need when we need it in, in extraordinary circumstances like this. So I think there is a shared will to succeed. Um, I've just got to make sure that what happens next is in, in the interest of the fans, the club and the town. Absolutely. And as, as you referenced in your previous answer, Wigan Warriors are potentially building a consortium to table a bid. Uh, what do you think could possibly come of that? And do you think it, it would be great for the town to have a, a Wigan-born owner? Once again, like Dave Wheeling, because obviously they know the town, they know the fans, and obviously as well, Wigan Warriors are a well-run club. They don't live beyond the means. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, you know, I, I've known Ian Lenigan a long time, and I think he's absolutely sincere in his commitment to Wigan, to um, the Latics. Um, you know, he was involved in the EFL for some time, so it's not like he's a stranger to the sport. I mean, if we could leave behind the rugby league and football rivalry, we really would have cracked the whole thing, I think. And I think it would be good for this town. Um, I, I would really dearly love to see a local bid succeed. I think the lesson of the last few years is that, you know, being sold off to a poker player in Hong Kong is not in the interests of the club. And if you look at what's happened to other clubs as well, who've got into difficulties or collapsed, the, this sort of system where we're at the mercy of people on the other side of the world who are looking to make money out of, you know, what is quite punishing economics in the championship, I, I just think, you know, that's ne that's never going to be in our interests. And, you know, obviously, if, if a new owner comes in from elsewhere, of course, I'll work, work with them and I'll try and support them in the interests of the club. But we have an opportunity to get this right now. And with Ian's intervention today, um, it's something that I really urge the administrators to take seriously and to give 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 weight to and to do everything they can to see if they can make that that deal succeed um and you know they can't um you know they can't give me guarantees that they're going to do that they've got you know responsibility to 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 get the best price but um i think that was understood and it was heard in the meeting today absolutely and it sounds really promising uh, on a, an ending note uh twig athletic fans uh, i know they've been quite concerned about quite a lot of things obviously potential asset stripping and uh, things on them lines. Uh, what would you say to Wigan fans, obviously, who are concerned of, of what is going to happen over the next few weeks? Obviously, we, we saw 75 uh, non-playing staff, uh, unfortunately, being made redundant, which I, I must say, my, my heart goes out to them because it kind of makes me sick to the stomach that so many amazing people are now out of work through no fault of their own. 
Yeah, I'm absolutely heartbroken about what happened yesterday. I went down to the club today for the press conference and to, to meet the administrators, but also, honestly, because I just wanted to see if they were OK. Um, and the staff that are still there, they're not OK. I mean, Wigan Athletic is a family. And, you know, for a lot of those staff, they've worked there for a very long time and it's heartbreaking. But, you know, the and, and what I would say to the, the fans is that I think this is going to be a tough few weeks. I think it's likely that, that's you know I mean the, the administrators were, were quite up front at the press conference so I don't think I'm breaking any confidence when I say that they're actively exploring selling players which is something that I and the club have urged them not to do but I think this is going to be a tough few weeks we're doing everything we can the council's been very helpful in preventing this from becoming a a fire sale um, and is using the, the stake that it has in the stadium and the leverage that they've got and the influence that they've got to stop that from happening. You know, we're trying to keep the club as intact as we can. And my big hope, of course, can't make guarantees, is that if we can get a good deal and we can get it through quickly and get that buyer in place, we can start repairing some of the damage that's been done. You know, we can hire back the staff who've just been made redundant, um, and we can start putting the club back together. And I do feel optimistic that we will get there. I'm, you know, can't make any guarantees. No one can at this stage. Can't predict the future. I wouldn't have predicted this happening. But I am optimistic that we'll get there. I'm more optimistic after having a conversation with the administrators. And, you know, there are people down there working around the clock, directors of the club, chief executive. They're not getting paid Um that, but they're working round the clock in order to make this happen. And I just want the fans to know that we will not rest until we've made this happen. Like this, for me, this is my absolute number one and only priority until it's done. And, you know, we're just not going to stop. And so I just say, you know, keep believing, you know, and look after each other and, you know, keep speaking up for the Latics because everyone at the club really, really appreciates your support. It boosts morale and it matters. Um, and just look after each other and, and we'll get through this. I'd, I'd like to thank you so much for that brilliant answer. To use it, the town's motto, keep believing, I think that's never been more fitting in a time like this. Yeah. Obviously, the main thing for a lot of fans and, and yourself and a lot of people involved is we don't want to wake up and not have a club to support anymore. And, and it's nice to see that you're doing everything in your power to help the club and, and make sure we are sustainable for the future. And like you said, I, I really agree that we need to find the right buyer and not have a situation like Berry. So, Lisa, I, I appreciate uh, you coming on today. I, I know you're a really busy woman. and uh, I, I like to say thank you so much and to uh, keep up the good work. Oh, it's lovely. Thanks so much for having me on and thanks for what you're doing as well. Let's um, let's come back together when we've um, we've secured the long term future and have a celebrate. Break yeah, let's let's now. absolutely do that. Let, let's have a few uh, a few uh, a few drinks and we'll uh, we'll celebrate. Hopefully, one day saving the club of Wigan. Uh, so uh, all the best. Take care, and we'll hopefully uh, catch up soon in the future.